To this day, many people still play this game, Batman Arkham Knight. This is a follow-up from Arkham City made back in 2011. In this video, I will be exploring good and bad parts that were made about this game and determine to see if this is still a good game in 2020. release of Batman Arkham Knight back in 2015 had much more to offer at this given time. The graphics were visually appealing, the fight combinations had a little more things to offer, and they had finally introduced the Batmobile. The Batmobile was a huge part of this game and the player wanted to feel like they were Batman, but it came off with a bad idea for it. When the Batmobile was finally introduced in an Arkham game, the player could finally breathe and actually say, this Arkham game is finally different from others. Well, they were wrong, and right at the same time. The Batmobile was used excessively in this game. For almost every match, Batman needed to use the Batmobile. So instead of it being a tool, it became a necessity. This decision made by Rock City Games to have the overuse of the Batmobile left a bad taste in fans' mouths about this game making them like it a lot less than the first impression. The Batman Arkham Knight story was structured in a specific way. War. The war on the streets significantly got so bad that they had to evacuate three islands in Gotham City, leaving cops, criminals, and Scarecrow in the Arkham Knight. The whole plot point for the Scarecrow was to make Batman suffer and drown in his worst fears. Back in Arkham City, the Joker gave him some of his blood that could have killed him. Get back here, Harley. And I want to know who he is, sweetie. No one's who you think they are, my dear. Why spoil the fun? It was all a lie. There's nothing wrong with you. Nice of you to say. But you of all people should know, there's plenty wrong with me. Take my blood, for example. I wish somebody would. This stuff is killing me. Why should I care? <laughs> because now, there's a teeny little bit of me in you too, bats. In Arkham Knight, whoever's blood gestated too long was affected with mad clown disease turning this person into the Joker. Scarecrow was able to bring that out of Batman with the help of the Arkham Knight. Batman then fights Jason Todd and beats him in trying to make amends. Tim Drake is then captured by Scarecrow and he now knows this is the end. The player then travels to Arkham Asylum like at the beginning of the first game. Batman is unmasked, he has fought with his worst fear and then switches it on Joker, and then finally gets rid of him, which in contrast to Arkham Origins, he meets the crazy madman. This is the perfect video game ending to end off this kind of series, by starting it from where it began, making this story arc that people have thought was very underrated. The Gotham City structure and building was very disappointing in this game. Never got to see the Gotham we see in the backgrounds of City and Asylum. This was very disappointing, especially for me. I built Gothams in Minecraft, and then given that, I was hoping to see the kind of city we see in the comics and concept art. Challenge maps and Predator maps was significantly better than they were in the previous three games. When you play these maps, you feel like you actually have a goal and want to beat this challenge. The fighting mechanics are a major factor in this. major factor that helps the player is the fear multi-takedowns. With Batman's new suit, it allows him to take down his foes harder and faster from what he could do before. What the, hell was that? the new suit is faster and more mobile. By getting close without being detected, I can get the jump on them, and in the panic, take down all three before they know what's- <laughs> Another 
thing to add is the skin designs. The designing of the skins. This game had the best skin designing. You can even wear those skins during cutscenes. And it actually looks like the Batman character variations from movies to the comic books. The random thug dialogue in this game is great and I love it. They randomly talk about stories and mention stuff that happened in the previous two games. First Arkham Asylum, then Arkham City, now this Arkham Knight? What's next? I say we leave Gotham City for a while. It's tempting, man, but Gotham's been good to us. Yeah, it has. So what do we call him now? Bruce Wayne? Well, let me try. Look out! It's Bruce Wayne! Ugh. Yeah, I know, it feels wrong. Joker gone, Scarecrow gone. Guess Gotham's in the market for a new evildoer number one. Oh, what? You think you got what it takes? Well, who's gonna stop me? Bruce Wayne? <laughs> that Rocksteady tried to add in this new game was new thug fight mechanics and weapons. Now thugs can charge at you, knocking you to the ground, and this time with the bats you can pick them up and use them to your own advantage. In this video, I wanted to make sure or clear that I explored all points on both ends of the stick to make sure my argument wasn't biased. From what I have said in today's video, Arkham Knight is still an enjoyable game that has lots of flaws. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more videos in the future. I will be trying to do more and uploading more. But uh, anyway, guys, that was it for me. I'll see you in the next one.